What's going on, y'all, and welcome to the Touchdowns to Home Run South Carolina Gamecocks men's basketball team season preview. The season starts today. We played Coker today. Uh, that game starts at 6.30. Our women's team has already played today, and they won their game 123-39 to against Charleston. Absolute blowout in that game for our women's team. They're the number one team in the nation for a reason, so they definitely deserve the credit for that. That is an absolute beatdown. Like, holy... I wish our men's team was as good as our women's team because that team can seriously play. Don Staley has their team in a very, 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 very good spot, and I'm excited to see what they're able to do for the rest of the season. But we play Coker today. It's time to start men's college basketball again. I got it on my TV right here. Who am I watching? Memphis and St. Mary's. I've just been flipping between games. I was flipping between Ohio State, Illinois State. I had games like that on. It's just good to watch college basketball again, even though – I would definitely say I'm a much bigger fan of the football team. I still love Carolina basketball, and it's a good time where our, our football team has given us a very up-and-down season that it has been emotionally exhausting, and it's just time. It's good because our basketball team is looking up real nice this year. Like We got lots of good talent on this team, and we got a chance to make March Madness and potentially make a run like we did in 2017. I'm very excited to see what we have this season. But before we start out with th this season that's just starting today, I want to get into what happened last season and what were kind of our struggles and everything. So we all know... The main thing that killed us and why we didn't make all the bracketologies and everything like that. I know the March Madness tournament got canceled and everything because of COVID and we couldn't even play the SEC tournament. But unless we won the SEC tournament, we weren't going to make it just because we had some bad losses on there. And it was all our pre-SEC games. So we beat Northern Alabama, beat Wyoming, beat Cleveland State. Those are three games. whoop de doo We win all three. Then we play Boston University at home, lose to them. That is a terrible loss on our record. We beat Gardner Webb at home, then we lose in the tournament. I can't remember where it was. I'm pretty sure it was like Bahamas or something. We lose to Wichita State and we lose to Northern Iowa back to back days. Then we beat George Washington at, at home. We beat UMass in UMass. Then we go home. We beat Clemson just before Christmas. And then we beat Virginia just before Christmas as well. We beat that. Uh, Virginia was what? The. 12th best, 9th best team in the country when we beat them. Everything was looking up from there. And then the first game I ever went to at Colonial Life Arena was this year because I'm from Toronto, Canada. So I don't go to uh, Gamecock games very often. It's very rare for me to go to them. I went to one back in the 2018-2019 season against Michigan. That game was in Michigan. So I haven't been to one in um, Columbia, South Carolina yet. So this was my first one I had ever gone to. Against Stetson, we're coming off a huge road win to uh, Virginia. Me and my family are on vacation. We're in Hilton Head Island. So me, my dad, and my sister decide to go down to Columbia. We make the two-and-a-half-hour trip, and there and back, it was like five or six hours in total. We make the trip, and I was like, you know what? This is going to be a good game. I know we're going to blow them out, but it's going to be fun to go to Colonial Life for the first time. I get to see all my favorite players play. It's just going to be a good game to sit down and watch and see the team play well, especially after beating Virginia. I was a bit mistaken going into that game because the Gamecocks played definitely the worst game of that whole season in losing to Stetson. Like Stetson is a middle of nowhere, Florida school that we just, they absolutely manhandled us that game like our free throw shooting was terrible we kept turning the ball over and we just could not hit any shots like it was not a good game at all especially for my first game at colonial life even though i did have a great time and everything getting to go there and just be with gamecock fans and everything because there are no gamecock fans up here i live all the way up in canada uh it was still fun fun experience but we lost that game then we lose to florida at home lose to tennessee in a very very close game in rocky top then we went on to beat Kentucky at home. That was the big Jermaine Kuznard shot game. That was a crazy shot. And that really started his progression in SEC play because he really became our team leader and just a guy. Well, we had Kotsar as our leader, but Kuznard was our main point guard for the rest of the season. And he was kind of our main scorer for the rest of the season. He was the guy that you relied on when you needed points in the late minutes when you tried to win a game or whatever. Kuznard was the guy, so it was huge for him to step up. We go to Texas A&M, we win that game, lose to 16 Auburn in Auburn. Then we beat Vanderbilt, beat Arkansas, beat Missouri, then lose that huge road game to Mississippi. 
we would have had a six game win streak if we would have won that game that was a huge road game to lose because that really stopped our momentum and it really showed all the like experts or whatever the people that are going to be conducting this bracket and everything that it just looked really bad on us that we lost to Mississippi even though it was a road game it was just a very very bad loss that set us back in all those bracketologies and everything like that even though there was no bracket this year I still think that we wouldn't have made it it just because some of the losses on our resume after that we beat Texas A&M, we beat Georgia, we beat Tennessee, then we lose to Mississippi State, which was a quad one game, which in my opinion, that was an absolute crucial game. And that's where the season kind of took a dip because we really needed that game. And even though Mississippi State was a very good team, we were both kind of fighting for that March Madness spot. So that was a game that we really needed to win to prove ourselves. We lose to LSU at home. We beat Georgia in a very, very close game. Even though Georgia did have the number one NBA overall draft pick, I still would have liked to beat them by more. Like, Georgia was not a good team last year. Lose to Alabama. I, in Alabama, that was the only game I wasn't able to watch. I was out that night. I couldn't watch that game. We beat Mississippi State at home. And then in Mike Cozart's last game ever, because there was no SEC tournament, we lose to Vanderbilt. That was terrible. That was a really bad game as well. Maybe even almost worse than the Stetson game, but in my opinion, not. Like, losing to Stetson and losing to Vanderbilt are two very different things. Neesmith Smith just went in the draft or whatever. He's a good player. I can't remember what team he went to. But it's not like that Vanderbilt has no talent on that team. So, that was our recap of last season. Obviously, if we want to make March Madness this year, if we want to go to Indianapolis, because it's looking like it's going to be an all-bubble tournament, everyone plays in Indianapolis, and they're just going to have multiple facilities open. We need to play a lot better at a conference. Like, that's bottom line what we need to do. These games, like, if we go out today and we lose to Coker, I'm not saying it's going to happen. But if we do do that, like, that is not going to look – we literally need to win out for the rest of the season. We need to take these games seriously, and we cannot loosen up no matter who we're playing because it's always those trap games. It's always those teams that you don't think are going to come in and beat you, don't think that they're going to come in a colonial life and beat you, and they do – and that just looks so bad on the resume. So first thing, definitely clean up the out-of-conference schedule because that's something that is really key. Let's see who we play this year out of conference. I've looked over it briefly. I haven't really got it ingrained in my head yet. I know that we play Coker today, and then I know that we have a Liberty tournament. We play Liberty on Saturday just before the Georgia game, and then we play either TCU or Tulsa. I think it's either Tulsa or Tulane and TCU. It, we play one of those teams no matter what on Sunday. So Coker, Liberty, then we play in Houston at home versus Wofford against George Washington in George Washington versus Clemson at home versus South Carolina State at home. Then our SEC conference uh, schedule starts on Tuesday, December 29th. So that is just four days after Christmas. It's going to be a good Christmas break. Because once Christmas is over, we start getting into SEC play basketball. And that's going to be fun to watch. We play number 10. First game. First SEC game. We get Kentucky. We go to a Rupp Arena to go play that one. And then after that, we go and play. This is a bit weird. We go and play Florida A&M on a Saturday, January 2nd. That game is in Columbia. That's at 3.30. That's weird that we just have a out-of-conference game thrown in there. Unless I, I'm living under a rock in Florida A&M has just got added to the SEC. I don't think that's the case, but we just got to add a conference game thrown into the middle of the schedule. Then after that, Texas A&M at Ole Miss, Tennessee at home, at LSU, at Missouri, Auburn, Georgia, at Vanderbilt, at Florida, Mississippi State, Alabama, Ole Miss, at Tennessee, Missouri, at Mississippi State, at Georgia versus Arkansas. It's as simple as that. Like, I can't tell you. Obviously, the top-ranked teams, the teams that are expected to do well in the SEC right now, Kentucky, Tennessee, and I think Alabama's up in the top 25 or something like that. So those are all the teams that are expected to do really well this year. I don't know where Auburn's expected to be because they were, they usually are pretty good in basketball. I know they just lost Okuro to the draft, but they're still usually a pretty good basketball team. Mississippi State was a really good team last year. I don't know that how they progressed. Obviously, Georgia is going to take a big dip from losing the number one overall draft pick. And you saw 
even with Anthony Edwards, that team was still very, very weak in multiple spots. Missouri is usually a pretty bad team in basketball. Vanderbilt's usually a weaker team. Florida's that middle of the pack team. They're middle to high because they're usually really good. They're a pretty good basketball program, but they are definitely a beatable team. So I'm expecting nothing the less from this year. LSU was a really good team last year, and I'm expecting them to be pretty good this year too. Other than that, who am I missing in the SEC? Ole Miss. I'm guessing Ole Miss is going to be near that bottom tier team, but that's also going to be a trap team. We can't lose to Ole Miss like we did last year. The big number in the SEC, I think for conference wins, is 10 plus games. If we can get, I want 12 or 13 conference wins. I know that's a bit much, but that's honestly what I want. I want to see 12 to 13 conference wins and try to drop as minimal games as you can the preseason. Like games like Coker, you can't lose that one. Can't lose to Wofford. Can't lose to George Washington. Can't lose to South Carolina State. Can't lose to Florida A&M. Those are five games right there that are must-win games. I know that they're against easy teams, but honestly, they're must-win games because those are games that we've lost in the past that have cost us going into March Madness and everything. I don't know how good Liberty is. I know Houston's a really good basketball team, so that's going to be a tough game. But if we could go on the road and beat Houston, that's going to be a quad one game easy on the road. That's going to be a huge for the resume. So let's go into Houston. Let's beat them there. That would be huge. We got to beat Clemson at home. I think that's also a must win. They are in a basketball school. We know that they're a rival. We don't want to lose to Clemson. We beat them last year. We should beat them this year. We're also going to have to pick up at least one win against either Kentucky, Tennessee, or Alabama. We get Tennessee twice, once away and once at home. That one game at home, Tuesday, January 12th, that should be a must win and not necessarily a must win, but that will be huge in a setting the tone for the rest of the season. Cause after that we play LSU in LSU, we play at Missouri. Then we play Auburn at home then versus Georgia. So those are some pretty winnable games after that Tennessee game. If we could get the mood swing and the momentum swing to go our way, going into those games and beat Tennessee, beat a number 12 team like that, that would be huge for our season. So the keys for this season win the must win games and those are the easy games at the beginning of the season do not drop a bad game to a bad team that's going to be huge and then get that 12 to 13 win mark in the sec play and i think that we're going to be a pretty good spot going into the sec tournament and then going into march madness uh what is it selection sunday where they pick all the teams i think that we'll be in a good spot for that day if we could do all those things the players that we got though how are we going to do that because we got some good players on this team this year. Obviously, we lose Mike Kotsar, who's kind of our leader, our big man. He's the last from that Final Four team to go. We have AJ Lawson, my guy from Brampton, Ontario. He lives kind of near me. Brampton's just like 45 minutes from me or whatever. Love the Canadian boy. Trey Hannibal's a guy I really like. He's shaky sometimes, but I really like his play style. He always plays hard. That's something I really admire about him. Jermaine Kuznard, I'd probably say, is my favorite Gamecock right now. Just seeing from what I saw from him last season, he's a sophomore this year. Hopefully he makes that big sophomore jump because he was a freshman last year. It was his first time playing college basketball, and he still was pretty, pretty good. So I hope we see a jump from him in this year. Him and Lawson are going to be the guys who need to play good every game, but they're not going to be the guys who, in my opinion, will set you apart from winning and losing because they're the guys who are supposed to play good they are the guys who are supposed to score points they're the guys who are supposed to make plays and everything there's a guy in my opinion who is going to be the deal breaker in how we play this year if we could get a guy by the name of Keyshawn Bryant going he's definitely one of my favorite players on this team explosive athlete he's got hops he has thrown monster dunks down since his freshman year I remember seeing him throw down a dirty one in Michigan I was there for that game that was unbelievable if he can really get going he's 6'5 he's a forward if he could play some defense if he could help Kuznard and AJ Lawson out I know he had a really good season last year but if he makes a big jump the Gamecocks are going to be dangerous this year I guarantee it if Keyshawn Bryant turns into a superstar the Gamecocks are going to be very very dangerous this year so he's a guy that I definitely am looking out for this season and a guy that I really want to see progress because he is a key in my opinion for this team becoming a very very high level basketball team another guy that I want to see in a lot more because he is our tallest player I know we had some foul trouble last year and he's not as mobile but we don't have Coats this season 
we need some height. We need something. We need something on the inside to just intimidate people. Other than him, our tallest player is, what, Alonzo Frank and who else? Jalen McCreary. Those are our two tallest players other than this guy. And this guy I'm talking about is Wildens Levesque. He's our big center, 6'11". We just need some big presence on our team. He's our big guy. I remember him being brought in to, during the Stetson game that I was at, and he kind of brought a new momentum to how we were playing. He gave us some juice and everything just because of his size. If he could limit the fouls and everything, and we have that big interior guy, I think that is going to help a ton for this Carolina basketball team. Other than that, we are getting a huge guy back by the name of Justin Manaya after he was dealing with a lot of injuries towards the end of the season last year. He's definitely one of our better defenders on this team. We know Frank Martin's a defensive specialist, and... Justin Manai has learned well from him. He's a really good defender. He's also a very good shooter. Then we got guys like TJ Moss, McCreary I touched on briefly. Who else do we got here? Uh, Seventh Woods transfer from North Carolina. Haven't seen him much. Javon Benson, he's a freshman coming in. I think he's our only freshman on this team right now. Yeah, he's the only freshman on this official roster right now. Uh, Trey Anderson, just reading the whole roster off now. Ford Cooper, uh, Mike Green, I know we don't see him much. I know he got in during the Vanderbilt game last year and made a shot, and the whole bench went crazy. Nathan Nelson, so we got a good team. Just use our weapons, use the guys, and we need to see big jumps from big guys. Keyshawn Bryant is my key for the Gamecocks because I expect Kuz, uh, Kuznard and A.J. Lawson to play well. A.J.'s already been named to the first All-SEC team. Keyshawn Bryant. A name to look out for for Gamecock basketball this year, 100%. He's my key to this season. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I appreciate it. Like the video. Definitely subscribe. Definitely comment anything down below about Gamecock's basketball. And thank you for watching and come back next time.